We completely lost everything what we have dreamed of, what we worked for. African immigrant Ibrahim Damage and his brother saw their furniture store at Lake in Chicago reduced to rubble during unrest last year. It stands as a reminder that he and hundreds of other owners of riot ravaged small businesses are still waiting for state aid to come through. For you guys to stand even to talk about it after nine months, I think is a shame for Minnesota. Shame for everyone. The Democrats who stood at that spot today passed the Promise Act in the House last summer, but it got nowhere in the GOP controlled Senate. They're trying to pass it again now. We cannot be divided and picking and choosing who's the win and the loser. Senate Republicans say they agree that businesses hit by riots here in Minneapolis should get some help from the state. But they want it to go directly to businesses, not pass through City Hall. They don't want the Minneapolis City Council or the mayor to touch any of that money. I'm, I'm willing to find a way, but it will not be through dollars to the city of Minneapolis that's dysfunctional. Senate leader Paul Gazelka has said people in other parts of the state are uncomfortable bailing out Minneapolis leaders. But a new study by the Minneapolis Regional Chamber found the city generates three times more in tax revenue than it receives in state aid. I will share I've been frustrated with the narrative of a bailout. What we're talking about here is not a bailout, it is about asset preservation. We are not asking for a handout in Minneapolis and St. Paul. We are asking for the same treatment, the same consideration that we would give to anybody else who is struggling and hurting and needing the help. In Minneapolis, John Croman, CARE 11 News. The Promise Act and the bonding bill will both be heard in the House committee tomorrow, while similar bills in the Senate are on hold for now. We are